Yeah, that's perfect. So the mic probably won't pick me up all the way up here, but it is what it is, and I will do my best. Um, so what's up, everybody? What's up? Everybody good? Yeah, yeah. Yeah? Yes or yes? Yeah. Yeah. That's great. Okay, cool. So we, we might need, oh, you can sit right there. Um, right in front of the, yeah. Yeah. So who doesn't know Ben Stout? Raise your hand. We got one. <laughs> <laughs> Two. She's messing. She's messing. Just one? That's perfect. So Ben Stout's got a name out there. That's pretty good. So Ben Stout is a uh, new construction builder. Um, him and his team are fantastic. They grow. Do you know your year over year number? Yeah. We've gone from uh, over the last five years from like 30 to 60 to 107 to 120. Uh, this year, our goal that we're going to get is 160 closed. Okay, so from 30 to 160 closed in five years, mm -hmm. decent growth, decent growth. Okay, it's okay. <laughs> but what he's going to talk about today is some of his, I guess, processes, some of his homes, and some of the some of the value proposition and what makes Big Stout Construction different. So I wanted to bring him in here so you guys can beat him with questions as well. If you don't mind, give him a warm welcome. You guys get some time. <laughs> Um, well, first of all, uh, you know, always appreciate the op op opportunity to um, kind of talk about our operation. Um, while certainly my name's on it, you know, anything that's worthwhile, there's always a team behind it. And um, we have a um, um, pretty decent amount of employees that work for us full time. And as uh, Ruben said, we've over the last few years really tried to grow um, and expand our business. And so, um, as he also summarized, the reason I want to come here today is really just kind of continue to uh, share what we're about, what I feel like makes us a little bit different. And obviously the end goal is um, an opportunity to work with you and your buyers. Um, you know, we, uh, we always say around the office, we're, we're a great home building company, but we're nothing if we're not a home selling company. So sales really matter to us. Um, so we can build a great house, a great product, have all those systems in place. But ultimately, it's a unique business in that unless we have somebody who comes in and buys our product, we make no money. From the time we start the project and all of our overhead, nothing gets into our pocket until we have a closing, which is a similar business plan that y'all have, right? And y'all, you're commission based also. So um, I'll just spend a few minutes kind of talking about my, my background. And then I want to spend a few minutes talking about um, some of the things that we're doing. And then as Ruben said, if y'all have any questions, um, uh, be more than happy to take those. So I, I've, uh, I'm not from here. I'm a Georgia boy originally. I'm a diehard Georgia Bulldog fan. So times these days have been really, really good for me, uh, both in business uh, and on the football field. Uh, moved up here, started renovating, flipping houses, um, flipped a lot of homes, built dog house, outhouse, whatever you wanted, I'd do it. Um, <clears throat> and then kind of made a decision that I didn't want to be a one-man band anymore. I wanted to grow and I wanted to, um, I, I kind of looked in, and, and realized I'd rather kind of go broke and go and try than sit around and, and just talk about it. And thankfully we haven't gone broke yet, but you know, we, we've had some challenges along the way. Yes, and so uh, um, if it happens now, it's not going to be good. Right. Um, and so, um, you know, about uh, five years ago um, and, and, and how you know, Ruben was, one was, was trying to figure things out. Um, you know, Ruben kind of gave me some left and right limits and some guidelines. And then I kind of, over the course of time, continued to evolve and grow and surround myself with a great team. Um, we have an amazing team. We have um, Brian Walker, who ran um, H and H Homes, um, the local division here for many years, um, is now running my operation. So, in terms of being able to scale up and execute the plan accordingly, him and um, the people that he's brought on board have really helped us. Um, and then we kind of add a uniqueness that I kind of my, my sprinkle in to help us get to where we're at today. Um, but if you've tried to scale without systems, it is, there's carnage along the way. Um, we're well aware of that. And I would say, um, you know, you have to address, um, in today's environment, um, you know, Google reviews and, you know, we're well aware of as a, I made the decision a while back that we don't scrub anything that's on our Google review ratings. I mean, it's a reality 
but there's challenges that come when you build a house. Um, there's challenges that come when you're operating in a manner that's probably beyond your capacity. And sometimes those things come back and are reflective of warranty and some level of craftsmanship. Um, those comments that have been made over, the, over time, um, you know, we're aware of those, but I would say the things that we've done, and this is kind of my part of my pitch to you when you have these challenges are, um, to, to address them head on. And so part of what I've been doing this year is to really going out and spread the message. And so some of those things, um, you know, when you look at a transaction, you sell one of my houses. Um, I was taught a long time ago. I started out as a real estate agent. I worked for, uh, Suzanne Pinnock, Ralph Huff and Larry Strother. I've been in the game back in the early 2000s. That's way back in the day. Okay. And I was told back then, if you build your business right in this particular market over the course of about two to three years, after you do that, if all you do is maintain your business, you can make a great living in this community because of what it is. The military town, that if you build the people right and treat them right the first time, they're going to come back to you, right? So if you sell one of my houses, typically that day, and especially what we've done lately, which we'll talk about here in a minute, is that should be a great day. It should be relatively stress-free from our end because we have people in the field now. They're going to give you a closing date. We're going to hit that closing date. And if there's anything that makes us move that date, you're going to know weeks in advance, not days in advance, because we understand the stresses of, well, my family's flying in. I bought airline tickets. I got a moving van. I got stuff. We're going to do a, an extremely good job of communication. Communication in our business is one of the keys to success. You've got to be able to communicate from my side of the table to your side of the table. Okay. So, you know, when you, when you look at some of those things of, of what, where the things that we struggled at were some of the warranty issues and some of the craftsmanship issues. Well, we've gone out since that time and hired a guy, his full-time job. He works for us. It's not a sum contractor. He wakes up every day and all he does is any issues that relate to warranty. Okay. So we have a local person. We have our own warranty program. We don't sub it out and not to say subbing out is a bad thing. We also don't do the 210 warranty. Again, nothing wrong with that. But then that, that takes the decision away from me and my team to decide whether or not we want to go address that issue. So if somebody else wants to do it their way, that's on them. I'm going to talk about how we do it. And so what we do is we, we have now spent a tremendous amount of time focusing on warranty and craftsmanship and walkthroughs. Why? Because if we do those things and you sell my house and we have a great closing, I know and you know if you sell my house – that when that client goes to sell and if we do everything post-closing correct, there's nothing we can do from my side to screw up your reputation, right? Because when you sell a house, anybody's house, you're in a sense backing that that person or that builder is, is like you're putting your name on it on some level. Well, what I don't want to do and what my team doesn't want to do as it reflects because this market's the local market, hence why I'm here, is real estate here is very personal and it's, and it's local, is – my goal and what our mission has been in 2023 is don't screw anything up post-closing because we know if we do that, you're going to continue to have positive feedback. We know that 97% of the people who have a positive experience don't say anything. We know the 3% 3 3 of the people that have struggles are going to blast it and give you one stars. I've chosen not to focus on the 3%. I'm going to focus on the 97%. And the reality is over the four to 500 homes we sold over the last four or five years, I think we have maybe 20 negative reviews. And if you do the statistics, it means that we're hitting like at a 97% rate. I'm going to broadcast that. I'm very proud of that. Can't necessarily go to Google and talk about that, but I'm not going to kind of get in the mud with folks. I just leave it alone. Okay, so let's talk about the things that we're doing and what we're trying to do and make the local connection for y'all to sell our houses because that's what I want you to do. Okay, so one, warranty. I touched base on it. We have a full-time warranty, guys. All, it's the only thing he does. So when your customer opens up any type of a warranty thing with our operation, they're going to deal with one person the whole time. He's going to be there every time a vendor's on site. So they don't have to coordinate anything. They don't have to coordinate with vendors. They don't have – we're going to work, and my guy's going to be there from the time that ticket opened to the time it closes out. That way there's no he said, she said. There's somebody there the whole time, and I think that that's important. Again, with him being there and the way we do it, we're going to make all those decisions in-house. You know, we've had situations that are borderline warranty or they're, hey, they started and it's month 12. I mean, if it's something that there's just no way a customer could have caused that and, and it's, a, you know, a breaker popping in a panel box and it's nothing that they cause, we're going to send our team out there and take a look at it 
And if we can't fix it or it truly doesn't belong to this, but we're still going to get them to say, hey, here's the action steps that you should be taking to resolve this matter. So that, that way they're not hung out to dry. And again, you can be 15 months past the closing, but it's still going to come back and reflect on either me or the people who sold my houses. So we're not just going to get, blow those people off. Um, I would say one of the other cool things that we're doing, and, and I'll, I, I, yes. No, I was going to stay on it. Okay, okay. All right. So, you know, I don't know how other builders do it, but I know how we've done it in the past. And what we've done in the past, we have a big book about this big that would tell everybody, hey, hang on to this book. Everything inside this, I mean, you, you can't screw it up. It's right here. Just hang on to this. It's going to help you down the road. And within 30 days, that book's disappeared. That's what we found out. The, the book doesn't exist. It outlines, you remember, you, here's a piece of paper. It's signed. You know, we have these checks. You sign the book. Keep up with it. It doesn't happen. Okay. So then what happens? We called his office. Nobody responded. We emailed info at Ben. We don't monitor any of that stuff, really. You know, you, you know how it is if somebody calls your office. By the time it gets to the right person, it's like the elementary school game. You don't even know what house it is and if it's really a problem. You thought it was a sales call, you know. So what the, the couple of things that we've realized is that's not the end all be all. There needs to be another resource or outlet if somebody has a warranty claim. OK, so what we're doing now in all of our houses is we have. Can I borrow this for a second? Inside of our cabinet. So it's going to be underneath your kitchen sink or in your upper cabinet. We now have a QR code. OK, it's going to be a QR code. Then have your plumbing, electromechanical and then a. The email that we reinforced to send everything to warranty at benstockconstruction.com is going to be plastered on it. So that way, if you ever go to sell one of my houses, again, focal point, we're going to sell us. Boom. Hey, this builder does a little bit different too. In addition to getting a big old, you know, property binder, if you ever have any questions, you just take your phone out, scan the QR code. It's going to take you to a landing page that once again reinforces the action steps it takes to make a warranty claim. Right, because it matter. We want it to matter to us, but we've realized now you also got to make it. Um, it's not dummy proof. Life moves really fast, and stuff gets shoved everywhere, and we're all living in a chaotic time. You got to make it to where it's easy for them to go find what they're looking for. So within all of our houses, I think it's something a little bit different that um, that we're trying to do. We'll just use the technology, make it easy for the homeowner. Because once again, if they can get feel like they're being responded to, and they're and they're happy with that thing. What does it do? It reflects good upon me. It reflects good upon you. And that way you don't get a phone call saying Ben Stout's team's not has blown me off or I don't know how to make a warranty claim. What am I supposed to do? We don't want that. OK, so that's the second thing. Keep it in-house. We manage it ourselves. We're going to make it easy for the customer. And then uh, also on our website now in the past. OK, first of all, the QR code, once again, should be a one stop shop. But again, everybody's on their phone. If somehow they get confused about that, we've also added on our on our um, web page just a warranty tab. Same thing. They click on it. It's going to immediately take them to a landing page, which is the same warranty email address. But it, it, we're, we're going to make it easy for you. And you land on it again. That way there's like full any way you want to go about it. If you get confused and you lose your mind, you can either use your QR code. You can go find your book or you can go to our web page. And again, to me, what that does is it keeps, you know, it, it takes away one of the things that we know had been an issue when we were coming up. When we were coming up and a lot of the comments that were made are related to warranty, we, we were very self-aware of that and we've been very proactive in 2023 to take care of that. And again, to me, the biggest reason why is I want, when you sell one of my houses, I want you to be confident knowing that we're local. And that's the other big thing that we've been focused on is being local. My office is at 1786 Metro Medical Drive. Every decision that we make is made out of that office as it relates to every house that we build. My phone number is 910-476-4502. It ain't changed in 20 years. I'm always available. If I don't answer my phone and you send me a text, I'm going to reply to you. Every meeting, and I've taken about three to four every month this year spreading this gospel. I'll give my cell phone out to another. I'm not here. My kids are here. My family's here. I'm not going anywhere. It's very important to me that if my real estate agents can't can't handle the issue or my team doesn't handle it, I, I'm going to answer the question. I had a lady uh, about a month ago. She called. She didn't know who she was calling. She called me. And she started going on like that, 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 that. I said, oh, okay, yes, mm -hmm. yeah, 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 okay, what's up? Okay, yeah, yeah, I know what you're talking about. She said, well, who, you know, I need to fill this out, yada, yada. 
I said, hey, I said, you know, I'm, I'm actually, I'm Ben Stout. She said, really? I said, yeah. I said, call me. I answer the phone. So let's figure this thing out together. What, you know, we worked through it, solved the problem, came up with, you know, I gave her my perspective of the matter because I was very in tune with it. She gave me hers. I said, I really appreciate it. I said, but having said all that stuff, these are the options that I can tell you. You can talk to anybody you want to, but I'm coming to me. These are the two options that we're going to do. If that doesn't work for you, it's 100% okay. We just might not be the right builder for you. And I would say that, you know, when we talk about scaling and systems and stuff, the other little tidbit that I'll give you, as soon as you can say the word no, it'll change your paradigm about what you can do. I, you know, you can't please everybody. I'm not going to focus on the 3%. I'll tell a quick side story. I'm going to go on a little tangent here. Is I, 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 I went, made the horrible mistake of clicking on some of these one-star reviews because I'm like, God, man, like I, 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 it matters to me. How can they not see this? And I was like, who is this? I looked at it. It's like, damn, I'm, you got a home inspection done. There were three items on your home inspection, like all minor in nature. And I know that we fixed it because you signed this piece of paper that says we did. I'm like in these five, I'm like, what in the world? How, and, and you know, y'all know this. this is again, you can never even get like a three. It's either five or one. I'm like, shit, but give me a three. Like it's a 60. I'm still failing. But man, I mean, like, you mean to tell me I only got 20% of your house right on a three home? I'm like, are you kidding me? I'm like, this. Just, and so I was frustrated. So then I'm like, well, let me find out what this lady's about. So then I clicked on her. I'm like, I'm going to do a little research on you. I cannot make this up. The very first thing that I saw was a review of Chick fil A, God's Chicken. She gave Chick fil A a one. I'm like, yo, if she's giving Chick-fil-A a one, I, can, I like, if that's her standard, I am so comfortable in my skin now, closing this out, I'm moving on down the road. So if I'm a, if a Chick-fil-A is one and I'm a one, I'm okay with that. And, and again, to me, it reinforces how hard it is to please everybody. So as soon as you can say no, man, it changed my paradigm. As soon as I was able as a builder say, can you do this? And I said, you know, now I'm at the point now, like, no, we can't do that. It's just... Because as you scale, you can't please everybody. You got to focus on what you know you're the best at. And we're no longer a custom builder. I know what we are. And that's really helped us get where we're at. So, um, so wrapping that conversation up, as it relates to warranty, and again, why I would love to have the opportunity to be your builder of choice in this local market, that is something that we're going to hammer home. I want it to make it easy for you to sell my houses. I want you to know that when you sell one of our houses, you're going to have confidence in the ability that we're going to handle that project. Everything up into a closing is fun. It's easy and it should be very, very reflective of the type of product that we're putting out there, which is a, a positive experience. That's the only thing, that 12-month period, the only thing we, that we can screw up is your reputation if we don't manage our business. We are not going to do that. We're going to manage it the right way and we're going to make sure it's reflective of y'all. So then the next year when they call you up, as long as you handle y'all's business and you get that listing again, we know in this market it's going to sell, right? Okay, so I think I've hammered on that on what makes us um, or why I prefer that y'all buy our houses. So then the next thing I'm going to talk about, and then I'll open up to questions, whatever you may have. You good? Okay. Well, yeah, I was going to say for warranty. Yeah. Does anyone have any questions in terms of what you talked about with the warranty? The only question I would have is like, do you have a time frame to respond to that? Yeah, so I mean, Okay, yeah, absolutely. So the question was, do you have a time frame for once somebody um, maybe initiates like a claim? And the answer is yes, we do. So I think that um, this isn't like a guaranteed 100% fact, but I can tell you this almost a fact, okay? Is um, I think that we have on our thing that we have between 48 hours, 48 and 72 hours to get back to you. Um, and typically, you know, stuff cues in. Again, every morning, Ronnie opens up his email and typically he's got at least get a response saying, your, your information has been received. We'll be in touch with you and gives them at least a soft touch to at least they know. Again, we know how it is. I mean, people like 24 hours. I mean, fuck, might as well be a week. It's like 24 hours is like, yeah, come on, come on. So, but yeah, we do we do set the expectations and standard of how long it's going to take for us to get back to you. Um, and there's at least a soft touch within that period of time that for then us to get figured out. And then it's working schedules. Oh, I'm busy. I'm this, I'm that. And what we tell clients, and I think that, again, this has been, for us um helpful is you know when you go to the doctor 99.9 .9 of the time that doctor's going to be say i can serve you between eight and five you know 
when you do anything in life and go to an attorney's, they might be between eight and six, depending on ten. when you go to the bank, there's hours. So what we've also learned is, well, I'm only available after six o'clock at night. Then that's going to be a problem because A, we disclosed it in your folder when, when we did two walkthroughs for you of when we're available. And my guys work extremely hard. My whole team works hard. And, you know, we have a, a lot of ladies got is we're going to be there between eight and five. We're not going to be there at seven o'clock at night to accommodate your schedule. And that's, that's a hard conversation for some folks. Like, well, what do you want me to do? The doctor ain't going to come see at seven o'clock at night. So that's something that I think we, we've tried to control the narrative and do a great job of setting that up front, those expectations. And then also what we've seen through those, when my guy gets there, typically because we've kind of somewhat taken control of the situation, they're much more responsive and willing to have honest conversations about what the situation truly is. And so, um, sorry, that was a little bit of a ramble thing. But yes, that, that we, we do have expectations of when we're going to respond. That's awesome. I just want, I mean, that's a, a great thing to look at in terms of holding your standard, too. Because, you know, in the beginning, I would guess that you were working past. Oh, the, uh, God. Right. So there's like beginning, yeah. starting the business, yeah. right? Yeah. Like, yeah. Hustle, hustle, hustle. But eventually, holding your standard is super important because obviously it then it slowed his growth. No. What was it 30 homes to 100? And yeah, we probably did like. $10 million in revenue four years ago, and this year I think we'll do like $50 million in right. revenue. So holding your standard doesn't say we're now going to eliminate business. It just says you've done a really good job of finding out who you want to be in business with. That's right. So that, that's that's right. So, so perfect caveat to where – so the, the – and again, I don't want to just chew on your ear. I'll, I'll try to – be quick here in this next phase. So the, the next thing I want to talk about is our, our product. And again, what I, what we have been focusing on to separate ourselves and um, adjusting it. And Lexi's got a great caveat. So I was just on my phone. Two things that, that I think that we're going to see and, and as it relates to our local market and then what I was going to talk about, which is our product type, which is one, uh, builder sentiment. And so like the I'm a subscriber to Builder Magazine, so it's like builder.com. They do a lot of national stuff, et cetera. And this month of April is like the first time that the builder sentiment across the U.S. has actually like increased, which means builders starting to feel good. Um, I can tell you since January um, to today is the 19th, um, our operation has taken contracts on 80-plus houses, which is like insane. It's the greatest run we've ever been on. Um, I think the rates have ticked down again. I saw the article that popped up there was like, you know, and I'm sure like I said, they were like six and a quarter. Guys, we made so much money as an industry in between 2004 and 2007 at a 6% interest rate that we committed fraud and destroyed our own industry because we got so greedy. That's what the rates were. The rates when things got so good that they started doing no doc loans, whatever it was, it wasn't the rates were at three or four. They were at six. And it was that good. If we can't make it at a 6% rate, like that's the reality of what we're going to be at. Okay. And, I, and again, I'll, I'll, I'm not going to take it, her platform. But so, but when things were at seven, as a builder, I was getting super nervous. That being said, I study my surroundings. I pay attention. And I think as a business, and again, each one of your businesses, you have to kind of have, don't look at today, try to project everything and all your decisions based upon 12, 24, 30 minutes down the road right? One, two, and three years down the road, every decision that we make today is reflective on not where we're at today, but where we want to be at, right? And so uh, about a year ago, I was paying attention to my surroundings. I saw that H&H &H had this new Pearl series, which is obviously an entry level first time home, right? It sold. It sold at every market and it sold any location for one thing, price point. I said, hey, I'm a pretty smart guy. This works. Like I went to the house and like with all the DIY stuff, like this is a good looking home. Let's figure this out. And so my team worked really, really hard for six months, developed their own plans. Oftentimes builders copy everybody plans to just take the plans out of the box, rename it uh, the Reuben and go build it. We didn't do that. We, we went and actually engineered this stuff. And so we have now, we have a new product. We call it the key series. We have these different taglines that, the key to unlocking a home, the key to affordability, whatever the case may be, it is that product. It is what they had called the Pearl Series. Now it's, I think it's called the Dream Series. We have the product. We have prices starting in the 250s up to 300. 
we are going to get, that was 0% of our business in 2022. It'll probably be 30% of our business this year and probably 40% of our business next year. Because at any price point or any interest rate, if we can't sell 275 as an industry, you are going to be out of business and I'm going to be out of business. It works and it's got to work. And, there, and, and it's a great, you know, we oftentimes hear, oh, well, I mean, I bet you're using this, that, and the other. as a cheap this. Hold up. Cheap and affordable are two different things. The same framer that builds my house, that builds my $400,000 house, is the same guy who builds the $250,000 house. It's the same insulation company, the same HVAC company. Matter of fact, it's the same HVAC unit. It's the same appliances. It's the same flooring. It is the exact same thing. It has nothing to do with quality. It is strictly affordability. And the way that this is done <clears throat> is every widget in that house is engineered to the, to the nuts. Every wall is 10 foot or 12 foot. Why? Because that's what drywall comes in. You know, you typically walk outside of a house and there's a drywall stack this big. And you're like, dang, man, it seems like there's a lot of waste there. Well, it is because when you have a 16 foot wall, you're cutting a board. This is, if you go out in front of it, it's a stack about like, yay, because everything is dialed in. Every cabinet runs dialed in. Every light fixture is accounted for. And so <clears throat> we are really focused on that product. And we're going to take that product to great locations. We're going to try to have a price point between 275 and 300 and I don't care what the rates are we're going to be that's where we can sell these houses at um, and you know what we also noticed with our competitors um, is that they didn't allow a lot of options okay I don't care if you're spending 275 or 475 as a homeowner we know that 99.9 percent .9 of those folks that's the biggest investment that they're going to make is buying a house right and so they should feel bought in at 275 or 475 it's, we want to have some level of decision making and and what we had noticed in the comp and the issues that we heard so again my, my building tip for growing your business is when you hear complaints that somebody else is doing something you see they're having success go try to find out what those weaknesses are take advantage of them solve the problem so then you take something that you know works and you solve the problem and then you roll it out right so that's what we did so the issues that we heard well you know, they don't allow anything. The answer from our peers was no to every single request. No, this is the house, no everything else. So what we said is, okay, well, we're going to give them some options. And we have a list of about seven or eight things, and we're still fluid on some of the stuff in terms of like this week we discussed, okay, well, instead of having floor breaks, if somebody wants to just have vinyl all downstairs versus carpet, will we allow that? And so we take feedback, we try to implement it. But what we've done with that product is we say, here's the price point. And when you write the contract and depend on where we're at in the phase of construction, we're going to give you probably seven different options that your buyer can look at. It's a flat fee. We'll disclose it up front, what it's going to cost. You check the box, we'll give it to you. You want a shower door, you want, a, you want garage door openers, you want upgraded uh, appliances, whatever it is that you want, all you got to do is check the box, write the check. That way they feel like they have some level of buy-in on what it is that they're about to purchase. Um, and the things that are in particular about that are where you get no options in the past. We're trying to take advantage of that, of that uh, weakness that we saw it. So um, key series, we're, it's, it's out in the field now. We've, we've had tremendous response. Um, you know, we have some of this stuff as an Autryville on one acre lot. So for, you know, a one acre lot for 260,000 bucks, you can have a new house. It's 2,100 square feet. So, I mean, it's very, um, you know, we kind of have certain locations out there. Um, and of course, our traditional product, um, you know, we're building in, and Lexi was talking about, we build in Cumberland County, Hope County, Harnett County, Sampson County, Robeson County, Bladen County, and we're going to be in Johnson County in the next probably 90 days. So pretty much if it is anywhere in the circle that touches Fort Bragg or Cumberland County, we're, we're in it. And so um, what I would tell you is our, our website in about two weeks, we just had a big meeting about it. Um, You'll be able to go to our website, whether you're on your phone, in your office, whatever. The very first thing you're going to see is our inventory list with the QR code. You scan that QR code, it's going to pull up. We're going to have two different things. One for what we call like our traditional product and one for our key series. Because they're, two different, they're, they're built completely different and they're not the same product, right? So we want to make sure that, that you as an agent understand the difference in the product type. So we've kind of separated that for you. So um, 
that's pretty much what I have. All I have to say. I'm not going to pound your head about different neighborhoods and different locations that that we're at. I mean, y'all are obviously experts in your field and and know how to uh, manipulate the MLS to go find those things. Um, I would just request that um, as we update our website and as you see those locations, if you do have any questions, um, you know, we feel like we have a great team that that supports us on the real estate side. Um, but at any point in time, I still have agents, and I love it. That hey, man. What do you have? I'm looking for this. Cool. I'll scan and email you. Here's some seven options under 275 that are moving ready. I mean, that's why my number's out there because I want to be able to facilitate those conversations. And then from there, y'all are experts. Y'all can um, um, take it from there. Um, I'll wrap up with this. Um, so one of the things that I oftentimes get asked, not just directly, but um, as a general statement as well, I really would like to be with a builder. What will it take? You know, I want to get some listings. Um, I can't speak for everybody. I can just tell you how my office works. Every single sale that we take, we track. If, if, if you will never have to call me to get a listing because I handwrite, me or Brian, handwrite a card to every single person who sells a house from the listing side. Handwrite a note. Thank you so much for selling lot X, whatever. So we spreadsheet all this stuff. I won't use any names, but I'll say 12 months ago, there's names just, I mean, people just kept, certain people just kept popping up. Like they didn't have to call me. I called them. I was like, what are you doing? And why do you believe in our product? Like, like this is insane. Had a conversation. Didn't take too much longer until they got listings. Again, I can't speak for every builder, but I can tell you, uh, as I made the comment earlier, we are nothing but a home selling company. We have got to sell homes. If I see your name six, 10, 12 times in a year, I assure you, you, you will not have to be calling me. I'm going to call you and we're going to have a conversation. Okay. I can't speak for how everybody else works. That's how I work. It's a results oriented business. Y'all know that, you know, you know, when you get a listing or when you go with a buyer, it, it's, I mean, that's a, the, the cold hard truth about real estate. It's a results driven business. I don't care about the zill. All I know is either you're a player and you can sell a house and you sell my product or you don't. And, and that's, I don't need to have a sales pitch. I just want to see results. That, I'm, I'm just being very blunt and honest with you guys because I know Ruben and, and I feel like I can just be upfront about it. So um, I can't, again, speak for all the other builders. We used to, and again, I, I think this goes back to, um, feeling more comfortable in who we are and as you grow your business. You know, we used to always have thing, well, bring me a deal and I'll give it back to you. But here's the deal on that. And that what I've learned is you have got to, you, you got to produce. That's just, for me, that's just that you've got to produce. To be able to go stick a sign in the yard and have it. But if you haven't sold my stuff in the past, what gives me any belief that now, oh, this is going to be the difference. And so for me, that's just kind of, you know, that's how I handle it. I'm not saying it's the right way. I'm not saying that other people don't do it differently. That's just what I've accepted. And we have a very, and now this is a cut, this is the hard fact of dealing with that man right there, is there's just a standard that's got to be met. And if you don't have a standard and you're not meeting it, then we're going to have the people that I deal with, we're going to have that conversation too. Because I'm not going to beg you to do it the way that we ask you to do it. And what I've gotten to and with the, the, you know, time for me is probably the most valuable thing that I possess and, and especially having a family um, and they didn't see me for the better part of two and a half years while I tried to build this thing is I'm not also kind of at the point now where, because I kind of handle all the sales and stuff now that I, it's, you've got to show out for me to want to invest in you and, and, and tell you all the systems and how we want our stuff done, how we want it listed, how we want the pictures taken, what phase construct, like all those things are time sucks for me. And so at this point in my life, you're going to have to show out for me to want to invest in anybody's business outside of my own. Um, it's kind of harsh, but it's also for me, like I'm not going to beat around the bush because I get that question so much. So what will it take to me? Any builder that doesn't recognize the value of somebody who's invested in their business by buying, taking their buyers to their house and selling their house repeatedly, and they don't get recognition for that. To me, that's a missed opportunity. That's why I've always said is you, you're never going to have to call me. I'm 
got to pay attention to it and then give people the opportunity. Opportunity. I'm not built into Caldwell Banker, Keller Williams, EXP, EXP spoke for themselves. I think what like third in the marketplace now, maybe set. I mean, like, come on, man. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I mean, I, I see that. That's why I'm here, you know. And so there are other, you know, I, and I'll say this too. Gosh, I'm on the ramble now. Is y'all will see this because I, I see it. The top five firms used to make up 75% of the new home sales. Now the top five probably make up 50% of the sales. It's reflective of what I see. There are a lot of, and mom and pop shops, I don't mean that disrespectful, but there's a lot of sole proprietors in our marketplace. Our marketplace is very unique and there's not a, a tremendous amount of the REMAC big flags flying and everybody flocks to them like in other markets like Raleigh. We have a ton of sole proprietorships which makes when I have a chance to speak to seven, eight, ten folks online in one location, it's very unique for Fayetteville. Um, and so uh, that's that's part of the challenge too when you're trying to herd herd cats. Um, when you have individual agents that are some stuff, it's it's a little more complex. So I I, I love the EXP. Um, I recognize um, the growth that y'all have had, and so many of y'all have had a ton of success. I'm not a huge social media guy. I, um, I have a Facebook page and I probably post on it six times a year, but I'm friends with most of you on, um, on Facebook and, and everybody um, seems to have had um, a level of success. It's you know, pretty awesome. So congratulations to all of you on that. And um, you know, you have my number. I'm, I'm not that hard to get a hold of. So if there's anything I can ever do for anybody um, on a personal level or business level, I'm more than happy to try to um, whatever little bit of knowledge that you feel like you get out of me, I'd be more than happy to share it. Appreciate the opportunity uh, that you gave me today, Ruben, and appreciate uh, your time. If y'all have any questions, um, I'd be more than uh, more than happy to try to take some. I have a question. Yes. <laughs> so, um, as real estate agents, we work a lot on lead generation. Mm -hmm. That's what gets us money at the end of the day. Um, so, does that mean that if I call you that I want to shoot a video of one of your houses that you're selling, we can go ahead and do it? Yeah, I mean. I think that the agents that I work for, um, oh, I mean, I can just handle that question direct. Yeah, I mean, I have no problem. I and mean, we've had people in the past make great videos. I mean, you know, rising tides lift all ship. Whatever, I mean, my company, it should be a tool to help everybody in the industry. We're all in the same game. Again, my success is directly and impactful tied in to your success. We have to exist. We have to work together to get to where our goals are, which is to take care of our families. In my case, I have a bunch of employees. And again, I guess that's all relative. But I mean, you know, my overhead ticks every month at serious six figures. I, I got to sell houses and I want to make that process as easy and as pain free as possible. And so, again, yeah, if you say I want to do A, B, six, one, Z, like if there's an agent that is listing my stuff that says, no, we're not going to do that. You text me and I'm going to say, yes, we are going to do that because there's no sense. And, you know, I mean, it takes some level of coordination and communication. But again, we talked about that word earlier, communication like that. That's that's all that boils down to. Yeah. Hopefully that answers the question. Awesome. Congratulations. Uh, yes. It's all good. Now. Yep. No. Um, yep. Down, yeah. Great question. So, um, okay. So the question was, do you have a standard for builder deposit, addendum gaps, um, upgrades, etc.? Okay. So, um, no. Okay. And what I mean by no is, if I have a home that's fitted, that's a finished inventory home. I know I'm not going to have to take that house off the market for maybe two weeks, three weeks. And let's say, how quick can you get a home closed? If it's done, finished, I have all my ducks and I'm ready to rock and roll two or three weeks, three weeks. Okay. So I'm going to take a house off the market that's, I don't care what price point. I mean, we've adjusted our price point. We don't have a single house that's over $400,000. Okay. So I'll take a house off the market for a thousand bucks, non-refundable. Because if I don't close it in about three weeks and have all the ducks that I need in a row check, I'm just going to put it back on the market. I didn't lose anything. I'm not going to take a house off the market that's a slab for six months for a thousand dollars. So to me, uh, and as I, I, we had this conversation earlier, what are you doing for incentives or what are you doing this? We basically have just scrubbed everything. 
And what we're seeing is we're seeing back to offers that are zero closing costs, nothing. We're seeing offers, 2% bridge, fly, uh, blinds, a fence, everything. And, and I guess it's all a perception of reality. I've never seen the market as good as it is right now, maybe less 12 months ago when the, everything was just zero. But, and maybe that wasn't healthy. Again, we got to work together, okay? But I also know this, in 12 months, everybody's cash who was closing all that stuff, and two days later I had a brand new $7,000 fence because the lumber prices were insane. The fence still got built, so they just dropped $20,000 in a week, didn't bat an eye. That money didn't go anywhere. They, people are selling houses. I mean, I, I guarantee you, if we sold 100 houses during the pandemic, I've made people probably $2 million in equity. I mean, the houses that we sold, I had a house, we sold it for $220. The house that we built nine months later was $280, and it just resold for $300. I mean, people are, and, I'm, and that's awesome. So I think what for us, we haven't had any issues on appraisal gaps because for us, again, the cool thing is with that key series, we don't even care. And what I mean by that is like, I'm going to price it at a price point that I know makes me X. I don't need to get greedy and try to push it from 279 to 299. I, 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 don't, I don't need to do that. I'm cool. With, I have a business model. I have a margin that I have to make. And I'm going to sell this house at this price point. It is what it is. And so... Um, but that, I know that doesn't answer your question. But the answer to your question is, no, we don't have a set amount. I think for me, when we look at this stuff, it's going to be based upon the phase of construction. The house is done. I want to get the house sold. Because I, yeah, pre, pre, yeah, yeah, pre-sale, I'm, I'm going to expect a little bit more because, I mean, we literally had one. <laughs> the agent was pretty funny. He said, hey, man, got to have a conversation. What's up? He said, well, he said, you know that buyer at lot, you know, 17, yada, yada. I said, yeah. He goes, well. He's still coming to North Carolina, but his wife isn't. I said, I said, oh, he goes, yeah. So it's going to be a problem for him qualifying. We worked it all out, ended up reselling the house. He bought the house across the street because he could afford it on his own. And that's life, guys. I mean, real estate, that's why real estate's hard at times because you have everything pre-qualified. Boy, all you got to do is get five months in the world. You're going to cash a big check. And then divorce, whatever. Bippity, boopity, boppity. That's why it's hard, you know? So, and that's why for me, you got to have some level of flexibility in a business also to scale. If you set so many hard lines, you're not going to want to come deal. Man, he's actually difficult to deal with. No, no, we want to make a transaction that's seamless. And so, again, I'm going to make the decision here. Me and Brian, my team, we're going to go, hey, what do you think about this one? Bop, bop. Okay, yeah, hey, we need to cut it. Yeah, let's just take that offer. But I mean, we don't have a hard and set thing. And that's what we've told our agents is if somebody calls and says, we're going to write an offer, what are they doing to say, just write up, write, write it up and we'll get back to you on it. Because I don't want to limit, there might be a house and I don't want to shoot myself in the foot, but I also don't want to hamstring you. There might be a house that we need to get rid of. There are also neighborhoods that we're killing it. I'm going to draw a little bit of a harder line in it. You know what I mean? So, so no, like, set like yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm gonna, yeah, hundred percent, hundred. And again, I can't speak for anybody else. And and even if our, um, you know, we, Ruben, I know y'all love. If you deal with me, he loves forms. Everything's got to be SOP. Da, 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 da. Awesome, love it. But for us, what I've seen is I've seen other builders like this is how you write our offer, and it's now it's awesome because it provides a temp template, and we do have a standardization about how we want our stuff. I mean, we're anal about like. I want it in one file. I want one 61-page file for that contract. I don't want seven different individual files. I'm kind of OCD about that stuff. But, you know, for the way we're in the market that we're in right now, for us, and guys, I mean, I'm telling you, y'all, it's so, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have like a five-second market conversation. Guys, it is going to be as challenging as you've seen it and as competitive as it's ever been, in my personal opinion, moving forward. And because this goes back to this, I also develop neighborhoods. I've, I've got, maybe I'm an idiot, but I'm pretty much all in on real estate. Okay. It's how I've made my living. It's how I've been successful. And I feel like I understand it. But the challenges right now to get a subdivision recorded are so, it's so challenging. Even once you get it recorded, to get the transformers and the gear inside the subdivision to provide power to the house, 
to even get power to the tent poles to construct the house, it's, I, I can't even tell you how hard it is right now. And so right now, I think in the MLS, we have about 400 houses, new construction homes available for sale. We're chewing through that at a really, really hard clip right now. And I think what, what the impact of in the end of the third quarter of last year, I mean, you know, you talk about going broke. I was super stressed because we weren't selling houses, and I'm sure y'all were seeing that too. And then the – so a lot of builders pretty much put a hard stop. They stopped building, and the banks got tied on them. The good and bad news about dealing with banks is that we've got so much debt with banks <laughs> because of the size of our company is they, they have to keep us alive. Where some of the smaller builders, they started reining them back in. Well, I know you sold one, but we want to get an idea when Silicon Valley went bankrupt when these couple big banks, the banks started getting really, really concerned. And so they started slowing some of the builders down. So you have this crazy storm. You have a lot of smaller builders who weren't able to get financed or, or got concern, concerned and stopped building. You have neighborhoods that can't get done. We had a neighborhood in November. The developer was done, couldn't get the equipment. So that was nothing. Six months later, so fully paved, good-looking subdivision, ready to go. Six months later, we are closing those lots next week. And you're gonna, it's only going to get worse. So if we only have 400 homes, we're selling them at a great clip, but you have less homes that have been getting built. And this industry, we can't build a home in, I mean, what, five months is like a really good turnaround time. So you can't immediately replace the diminished inventory. When the summer hits, I think it's going to be like the wild, wild west again. Um, and I think that the builders who have inventory on the ground, which my – I, maybe I look like a genius now, but I can tell you there wasn't big formulas. We never stopped. We had so much out there. I couldn't slow it down fast enough to stop home. So we just kept going for it. I was like, you know, well, we're going to find out if we're going to make a lot of money or go broke. And we kind of hopefully we're on the other side of being successful. But um, it's going to get really competitive again, in my opinion. Um, I, I think that you're going to have, there's going to be a struggle to get um, subdivisions done. Then there's going to be a struggle to get, uh, the amount of volume that needs to be built to replace that stuff. And it's going to be, um, I think you're going to see, I know that you're going to see Dale Horton come back into our market. So you, you are going to see some like big nationals that. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, they're, they're, they're going to come back into the marketplace. So I mean, th there's going to be some challenges. Um, again, my, my uh, as I said earlier about being local, um, that's kind of what I want to be my message and what I want my buyers to understand and know. And maybe one of the things that's a differentiation between us and, and them, whoever them is. Um, but anyhow, I think that you're going to see some challenges coming up. I think that the buyer sentiment, again, we have what national, regional, and local. And I think that our local market is, and again, that's where you are the experts and we got to prep your buyers is that it's going to get competitive again. And like the idea of being like, you know, you're going to get ABC, X, Y, and Z and under price, like, that there was a period of time, maybe in the third quarter, where we were like, yeah, whatever it takes to sell a house, I'll give you 3%. I'm just telling you that the industry, in my opinion, is going to be, you know, it, it's going to be very, very constrained, I think, over the next six to 12 months. That's my two cent market analysis. Um, so, back real quick to the appraisal. Mm -hmm. Is it an appraisal lower? You... So, we had one that just happened, and we. we is it a, 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 appraisal gaps. Price? Yeah, so great. Like, So, yeah, so, I mean, we had one, and again, you know, okay, so so the question is, we're back to um, appraisal gap addendums where, you know, the builder's saying, well, I'm selling it at this, you can either buy it at that, I don't care what the appraisal is, find, figure it out on your own. Um, we just had that happen to us for the first time, and I can't tell you since when, and we basically went to them, and our, we said, look, would you be willing to split it with us? They said, yeah, absolutely, so that's what we did. I think, again, I can't speak for the industry and what their mindset is, um, but what I can say is um, a little inside scoop from a builder. Interest for us is very, very real. Every month that I, my, my interest payment for the amount, now we have a lot of homes out, but it's a six-figure bill every month. Every month I get auto-drafted serious six figures out of my checking account to pay for interest. So then a builder has to sit there and say, hey, I got a finished home. I'm ripping off, let's just hypothetically say 2000 a month. 
then I got to pay utility bill of $100 a month. And now I got to cut the grass because we're getting into summer. And then I got to, okay, it's going to cost me $2,500 to sit on this house or it's 5,000 bucks. When am I going to sell? If I wrote a contract today, tomorrow, it's still probably another. Yes. Yeah, so, so I, so I, I'm giving you a little insight to the builders is when interest is real, like it is now, it also impacts your mindset a little bit different too. And saying, well, I got a fish in the boat. Am I willing to cut this person over? It ain't 5,000. It's 2,500 because I'm still going to pay interest. And so the way, again, the way that we're going to handle that situation is we're going to have an honest conversation. We say, Hey, listen, this is what we're looking at. This is why we feel like we're right. Like it's seven months ago that we sold this house and the appraiser was using the same value in seven months. We know that it's appreciated. Okay. I, I can't help that, but and I'm making this up. It's a, you want a 2% in closing costs and it's a $5,000 gap. We can either like cut your closing costs in half and we'll call it slick and go down from 1% to 2% on $300,000 house and we'll call it good or we'll split the, I mean, we're going to try to have a dialogue with the person to try to get the deal done. That's our mindset. Can't speak for everybody. So um, are we still going to make you sign it? Yeah, absolutely. But I think when the dust settles as a business person, we all going to make the decisions for, at least for my operation, I'm going to make the decision that's best for my business to facilitate the deal if the numbers are right. You know what I mean? If that makes sense. Okay. Anybody else? Great question. Cool. Um, oh, 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 anybody else? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> anybody else have any other questions? Obviously, the way that he speaks and, and uh, takes in information, it's not going to hurt his feelings. So it could truly be any question that you guys have or want that, wanted to ask David. It could be anything. And if not today, down the line, right. again, I'm, I'm more than happy to, um, I'm never going to, uh, I'll, I'll pretty much have an honest conversation if you ask me about certain peers. I'm never going to um, knock another peer. Ultimately, everybody has to go to bed on their own, and if a, a business wants to operate a certain way, that's not my, I'm not there to criticize that person. Um, but if you say, hey, what do you know about this person? I got to put. I'll try to give you a uh, very mature, fair assessment. If you have a question about, I can, I can tell you, again, I'm very upfront. I've built a lot of houses and I've superintended and I was in the field for a long time building them, but I'm not a home building expert. I can't tell you about bearings on walls and load points and all that stuff. That is, that is not what I do. Um, I would encourage you to speak with somebody other than me about that stuff. But if it involves, um, you know, business or, or, you know, I'm trying to build a business or um, selling somebody's uh, other product, I'm never going to disrespect or um, degrade another builder. But I will try to help um, um, any way that I can if you do have questions or run across situations or, hey, somebody said this, you know, what are your thoughts on that? I mean, I'll be, um, I'll probably give you a polit politically correct answer. But I'll at least be fair to you because if you take the time to call me, it means that in my mind, you're trying to at least get, um, you know, you're trying to get somewhat of, of a good input. And I'm more than happy to try to provide that to you. So um, if not now, anytime, happy to help. Any yes, ma'am. Do you build um, custom build houses? Great question. Okay. Yeah. So man, we, we would build you anything a while back. But what we found is to do a true custom home, um, the amount of time and attention to detail, um, it, it just, we, we can't please everybody. And so we've gotten out of that business and we get calls about it. Now what we will, um, you know, gosh, y'all know this for the better part of three years, right? I mean, to answer your question directly, no, we don't build custom homes anymore. Okay. So I'll answer that directly. What I will also say though, is that um, our website, we really invested into it and we're, and we're like, we're really close to trying to be like cool and talk about our website and like broadcast that out. It's taken, it's been a work in progress. Um, but you know, we have our plans now, everything's going to have a 3d rendering. We have all the Matterport, you know, I call it 3d when you can, people can walk inside your house, you know? So everyone, our plan should be a 3d rendering, should have a Matterport and it should have professional photos, not just 3d to where a client can go in there and get a really good idea of what that house is. In addition to that, because we put a lot of inventory down, we have finished, we have moving ready product. Now the key series, we ain't had anything get done. 
We probably will. So we'll have move-in key series 265. You can close on it in 30 days or less. We have our traditional product you can move into 30 days or less. So if they want to do say, say, hey, well, I really like this subdivision. I like this plan. Is there a lot in here? I can build this house and make some selections. Guys, for the better part of three years, our industry couldn't even really do that because we didn't even know what the heck we could get delivered in any period of time. But we're back now that we feel really comfortable with what we can do and what we can supply and how quickly we can build these houses. So the only type of, of, of custom, and I'll define custom as custom is our plan with the materials that we can source the house with in our neighborhood, we'll make that happen for somebody. And, and we feel comfortable. We got a great showroom now. We have a lady, uh, Charlotte, who all she does every day is selections and closings. So she has a great thing. We're getting more and more online. I know uh, Ruben loves technology to scale. So we're getting better and better at putting together mock-ups of our materials to where they can click on it. It'll take to the person's website and show you what Sherwin Williams, um, I don't know what, I forgot what it's called, Agreeable Gray. I mean, like, you know, so we're, we're getting better and better at getting some of that stuff figured out. And we'll, we'll do a pre-sale, um, but we're, we are out of the custom home building business. Thanks. Three minutes. And you ain't got to keep me online for three minutes. That's a long time standing up here. So, um, no. Any lending side? Yeah, I mean, it, uh, construction loans. I mean, I, I think the business that we operate now is if you're building our plan, our product, and you qualify and you put, you know, a, you know, a percentage of money down, we're going to handle that finance and in-house at our bank. Where all you got to do is just close them at the end. So, I mean, we used to do, you know, construction of perm loans. You know, we, we can in-house do that as quick as anything. And so if you're going to do a house for us in one of our neighborhoods, all we got to do is have a letter from you that says they can close on this house as long as everything stays the same way. And we're going to go write that contract, fund it ourselves and go build the house. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. We find it uh, the same way. We're building a house for an employee right now. And, uh, he's awesome. You know, one of our, uh, one of our builders and, uh, it's taking us back to like doing a construction of perm. And, and I mean, I'm just like, um, and I absolutely love them. Um, I'm like, and this is why we're not doing this anymore. Cause it just, you know, it, it, yeah. And I mean, I love, the, I love them, love them, love his wife, beautiful, beautiful family. But it is, it's, it's different when you have people in your office, it's different when you're, you know, they're intimately involved with it. Um, and it's not to say that that's not the way it is for a true pre-sale, but once we make the decisions, it's our job just to go build the house at that point. We're not going to have a whole lot of back and forth, you know, moving forward um, with that. Um, and, I, and I would say as it relates to like if, I, again, I can't speak to peers. I'll tell you about ourselves. So like our key series product, which is, you know, a, again, more of a, that entry level product. <clears throat> we have a superintendent or we call them, we call them builders at our office who uh, from the time that the slab was poured to the time he had a CO and closed the house, he built a house in 88 calendar days. So I know that some of the issues that our peers had was it took nine months to get a house closed. 12. Hey, listen, we understand when you're in a relationship, I mean, it's all good and buddy, buddy, and you want to go drink a beer with them. But when you get multiple, the, the, again, how do you screw up a relationship with a builder? You, you don't get the house closed and, and post one. It's the only two things that you can screw up, Right. But if we can build a house in 90 days and month four, you're getting a check and they're moving to a house, that to me is the best relationship because it's time constraints, not that bad. They're happy. They're moving a house. You hit a closing date. You move on. Everything's good about it. When you it takes nine to 12 months to build a house, that is not a situation that I want to be in. I don't want to be in any relationship unless it's with like my employees and my wife or something like that for an extended period of time. I want to make a quick transaction, move on down the road. We're a volume builder. We're not a, you know, one mom and pop shop and we, we're going to sling some houses. So um, I would say that's one thing that I think is a little bit of a differentiating point too, is that you got a client at that price point and you know, in 120 days, you can close that house. Um, I mean, we can back up what we say. We can, we can build houses. Um, that is not a issue with, um, with our operation. And, and in my mind, we can build a quality house. You're not going to get a, 
17 page, well, kind of want home inspector you're higher, but um, you're not going to get a 17 page home inspection report. And if you do get a 17 page home inspection report, that home inspector will probably won't be on our list of people who can do our houses after that because I don't need to be told, um, you know, ask this person, ask that person, just tell me if there's an issue and we'll get it fixed, you know. Um, so I, I surely burned through three minutes. Surely you can let me off now. Okay, I, surely I can just walk away. So, uh, all right. Hey, I seriously do appreciate. Thanks for y'all's support and, uh, you know, for the time that y'all took today to get yourselves better. Obviously, y'all are legit players and um, hope y'all have tremendous success moving forward.